Welcome to Wacky Wednesdays, where everyone has a chance to show off their car mods. And here's this week's winner. I know what you're saying. What the heck is a Maverick? A lot of people look at this car and they go, is that an old Mustang? Well, I guess it does have somewhat of a family resemblance. Maverick was in the 70s, the early 70s, 70 to 77, and it was a, a simple car originally, but they made this sport package called the Grabber. This is a 71 Grabber, and it's very unusual in that it has what's called a dual dome hood scoop, which was for only two years. Otherwise, they had flat black or color paint only. The rear tail lights were blacked out, the trim that is, and you can see this particular one has a black vinyl roof. The Grabber was a trim package. It was not a performance package. These cars originally came with a 200 cubic inch six. Eventually, they came with a 302 cubic inch V8, which this one has. The Grabber package included these high back bucket seats. Not adjustable, but nice. The interior was pretty Spartan, but really quite tasteful. I think Ford really did a good job on it. Now, the car is 47 years old, and you can see where my elbow has been all those years, but it's held up remarkably well. Back in the 70s, getting in and out of this car wasn't too easy. It had this seat that's kind of bent back and forth. You bent it back and forth, and then you jumped into the back seat. What a drag. A couple of my favorite things is these wheels. If you notice, they're red. Well, I actually had them powder coated, the entire wheel. And the outer trim ring is stainless steel. And the hub cap covers most of it. But I love the little bit of red that peeks out. The Maverick Grabber stripe, you can still buy. There's a guy, I believe, in Arkansas makes that stripe. Insane, isn't it? By the way, all you purists, check it out. The original spare tire. And yes, it has the original air. This had the optional sport mirror package. Notice with the remote. Yeah, baby. Now this is the original V8 that came in the car. I did take it apart just to see if it needed work. And as it turned out, it didn't need anything at all. One of the unique things about it is it had a factory overbore. What do I mean by a factory overbore? It had the original Ford pistons in it bored 30 over. I was talking to a Ford old timer and he said back then, he says it wasn't uncommon for them to pull a V8 or any motor out of the assembly if there was a scratch hone it down and put in oversized pistons. Over the years, I've tweaked it. For example, you're probably looking at the Edelbrock carb, but if you take a really close look, you can see that I have Airflow Research heads on it and some simple hooker headers. It really makes the car breathe a lot better. Now, I've taken Scotty's advice. I have all the parts, Scotty. This car used to be a power steering car, but about 20 or so years ago, I took it off because it was that old external power steering and it dragged and leaked. Well, I'm getting older now and I needed power steering. So there are wonderful kits now that take Saginaw, which is integrated power steering, integrated in the power steering box. So you Ford guys are noticing that looks like a Chevy power steering pump. And it's a Saginaw pump, which, yes, Chevy uses. The car came with standard drum brakes. Uh, Four-wheel drum brakes can be exciting sometimes to stop. <laughs> so I managed to find, from a 1977 Maverick, power disc brakes. So this car has power disc brake conversion. And that's that weird, ugly bracket that goes around the master cylinder and brake booster. Let's see how quick a 47-year-old engine starts up. Not too shabby. It has a slightly, what they call a slight cam on it. Again, it helps it breathe real nice and gives it plenty of power for a very light car. I have a flex fan on it. Those are all old school uh, power tricks. Old school, old school power. Can you say rumpity, rumpity? Here's the dash. You Maverick guys, you Torino guys, you Pinto guys probably know that that turn signal lever reflected 
right onto the glass on the speedometer and the instrument cluster. That's why I took off the glass because you would be driving down the road on a normal day and you could not see the gauges because of the reflection of that stupid turn signal lever. Great engineering, Ford. Close up of the tiny back seat, but if you're a small person, a uh, kid, it was just fine. By the way, there are two old school six by nines from Radio Shack, yeah. Everyone remembers Radio Shack, right? Now these cars didn't have roll up back windows. They had these strange sort of pop out windows. Check it out. Now, many times, not with this car, but I would see these windows pop out at highway speeds. I mean, pop out on the floor at highway speeds. Grabber package included this rear deck spoiler. Can you see that little lip there? Now, on the eBay parts market, that is a highly, highly desirable part. Also, the bumpers started to get bigger, bigger, and bigger. This is the small bumper Maverick. In 73, they started to get big, and by 74, they were gigantic. And here's the tiny bumper, again, in the front. Much, much more tasteful. The big ones were, well, they were terrible. But, hey, it's what you got with all the regulations that were coming in. Put in an aftermarket oil and transmission cooler. It does use the standard C4 transmission, which is their medium duty transmission. The C6 was the bigger one that was in Torino's and other big cars. They're great transmissions. I have never had any trouble in all 47 years of it being around. I do have a, what's called a mild stall speed uh, converter to allow it to rev up a little bit, to get a little bit off when you tap the gas. And I do have a traction lock rear end. week's video and to have your car mod shown on my channel here check this out so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell